We have an increasing number of our patients that are being diagnosed with these autoimmune diseases. And so I brought my colleague here, Dr. Suzanne Turner, and she has a whole um, health clinic called uh, Vine Medical, and it's also in a suburb of, of Atlanta, Georgia. And Dr. Turner here is going to talk with us about autoimmune diseases and novel approaches to treating autoimmune diseases in today's world. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, yeah, thank you for having me. So um, I know you also are doing some lecturing, upcoming lectures. Uh, Dr. Turner has an integrative medicine fellowship from a, uh, a group called A4M. She is a graduate of William & Mary, and she also went to Emory University for medical school. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate when I'm able to speak with someone and share with the public um, new ways for health, but especially with people that are teaching other physicians, other healthcare providers about these new techniques. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. Tell nice us to meet you. Good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about some of some of what you're talking about. I know one of your buzzwords uh, is, is the word peptide. Yes. So peptides are an emerging science. It's very exciting. Probably the most famous one is uh, insulin. That's what most people have heard of. These sure. are these are proteins or, or small proteins. Proteins are 150 or greater amino acids. Uh, 50 or less amino acids we call peptides, and they're made by your body. They're things that you normally make. So uh, years ago, they've been around for since the 20s, but years ago we had to pull them either from humans or from cows or from pigs, mm -hmm. and now there are ways that we can create them in a lab in a much more efficient and organized and uh, available way to make them accessible to labs and pharmacies and patients. So they're available for treating lots of diseases, and we're just capitalizing on the way that your body naturally works to mm -hmm. allow you to uh, do the things that you that it should be doing, maybe where there might be a deficiency or where a genetic mutation might be not allowing you to do the things that you should normally be doing. So when you're seeing that the body's maybe struggling with a process, you're really just trying to support it to do what it already wanted to do exactly. with things that are natural chemicals or identified as natural chemicals to exactly. the body. Exactly. Things that your body will recognize as self, as, as what, they, what it's familiar with. Are these things easy for people to go get? I mean, this is definitely obviously not something you would just go pick up at the drugstore. Exactly. Um, so do you always work with a certain, like certain pharmaceutical companies, or is this like a compounding pharmacist? Tell us a little bit about this. Sure. So they do require to be compounded. They do require a prescription. At this point, most of them are available compounded. There are a few that are available through your regular pharmacy, but most of them are available compounded. They are uh, not, they are uh, FDA approved. The facilities where they're made are FDA approved, but they're not, uh, they, they're not um, recognized by a pharmaceutical company, which right. is probably a good thing in some case. There's a list of, of things that, like the compounding pharmacy isn't going to make something you can just go buy readily, uh, that's readily available by a drug company, for exactly. example. So then you can really customize something for a patient based on their needs. And a dose or, a, or the specific combination. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you really drew my attention to a few months ago was BP-157. Mm -hmm. So I loved it. You were telling me about, you were asking me, are we using that in dentistry for periodontal disease, gum disease, which really affects at least a third of Americans? And I was like, no. And that's why we really need a more collaborative effect or effort, excuse me, between different parts of healthcare. Mm -hmm. I'm dentistry and you do medicine, but we really need to be working together because then the patient wins. So when we come back, why don't we talk about what BP-157 can do and maybe you could also talk about some of the other ones that you often work with with your patients. I'd love to hear about those. Thank you. So hi, we're back from our break and I mentioned we we're going to be talking about this BPC-157 peptide and the other, some of the other ones, other peptides that Dr. Suzanne Turner uses in her practice with her patients that, that struggle with different things, a lot of these things are autoimmune issues. But maybe we should back up just a second and just do a little background explaining on what peptides are. Um, most people don't talk about peptides all the time. So, um, and autoimmune issues. Okay. So, uh, if we're talking about autoimmune disease, when we're looking at how do we pick which protein that your body makes to use because your body makes hundreds of them every single day, thousands of them every day. So if we look at the immune system and we look at how your body responds, there are cells that we call monocytes that I like to, they, they can come in two different forms. One of them is what I like to call the janitor. The janitor cleans things up and organizes and files things away in filing cabinets. Mm -hmm. 
the same cell if it's stimulated by some sort of environmental thing, if it's stimulated by either an infection or a, uh, a, a trauma, or if there's a genetic mutation can contribute, or physical or emotional distress, mm -hmm. can convert that very quiet, calm janitor into what I like to call Henny Penny. So the very <laughs> same cell runs around screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, throws chemical inflammatory messengers all around the body, and now the body begins to behave in a different way because it's being stimulated by this Henny Penny. Very Our cool. whole goal with treating with many of our peptides in uh, affecting all sorts of disease processes, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's disease, uh, um, traumatic brain injury, infections, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome that would probably affect the dentist industry. industry. Yeah. Uh, you would see that um, what we're trying to do is convert that Henny Penny back into the janitor so it's doing its cleanup and repair work, it's filing and organizing jobs. So that's where we're trying to, the effect that we're trying to make. That is really cool. So we've got a Henny Penny, somebody who's gone postal, and you're just trying to loop them back in, rein them back in, and train, retrain or reset the body to, to do what it was exactly. trying to do before. So you have different probably favorite peptides. Um, can you maybe demonstrate a few of this? We mentioned B, this BPC-157, and I did find a study for dental people out there that when I was talking to American Dental Association, I brought it up, that um, there was a study that they did rat with rats, and they tied um, dental floss around teeth, and some of the rats, they, and they left this floss there for like weeks. It was awful, or it would have been awful, except some of the of the animals had received BPC-157, the other ones did not. And the ones that received this peptide had no sign of gum inflammation. Exactly. And that is incredible. So then you start thinking about not just that, because see, when we have inflammation in our mouth, we really have inflammation everywhere. So there, it has been studied for periodontal disease, and then when you use it, you're using it in what types of patients? So the most research that's done with BPC, this is body protection compound is the, oh, what it goes, okay, BPC. Helps. And so the, the most research in BPC-157 has been done in patients with ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, peptic ulcer disease, wow. uh, patients with traumatic brain injury, yes, wow. patients with even as simple as tendonitis, mm -hmm. there's been so. So this is really the healing protein that really helps, or peptide that helps you with all sorts of healing phases. The way that it works in that system, helping to move those cells back to that genitor, calming, uh, so that they're not producing the inflammatory henny penny uh, proteins, stimulating your body to overreact to things. Wow, that's really cool. We all used, of those types of patients too. Mm -hmm. Wow. We use it in all those patients. There's combinations of things we use depending on the patient. Everything is customized depending on the patient. That's the best thing about compounding is you can be very specific for an individual person. Uh, BPC-157 I often will use in, in, in uh, uh, patients with intestinal issues. And most of our inflammation, as we know, starts in the intestines. That's where we see all of the, the pathogens enter is through our food, through our things that we eat or drink. And there's so much, the majority, I think they say, of our immune system cells are located in our gut. So when exactly. our gut's not functioning right, everything else starts to go haywire. Exactly. If you imagine that you're from your mouth to the bottom, you're, you're like a paper towel holder or a, a, what are the, the inner part of the paper towel. Yeah. You are, the, everything that's on the inside of that paper towel is, uh, is the outside of you. So you're trying to protect yourself so most of your immune system lives in that barrier that lines your intestines, trying to protect yourself from all the things that are actually coming from outside of you keep trying to keep them from coming in. And when that barrier gets broken down, mm -hmm. that's when we end up with autoimmune diseases or food allergies or asthma or any of those uh, environmental things that we, can, that we can have where our body is reacting too strongly. There's so much evidence even now that some of the particles that are around that, the bacteria that get into our system mm -hmm. can be present in the plaques that are, that are in dementia patients yes. in their, uh, that, we're, that we are familiar with in Alzheimer's patients. We see the particles from those bacteria that get in through the intestines in the brain. So we're connecting plaques. that. They're crossing Absolutely. that brain barrier. 
Absolutely. Through, through circulation. That's really fascinating. So you also, you probably are also using some of these peptides to help with gut health, maybe? Absolutely. That's where we usually will start, is we'll see patients with intestinal. I'll start with that because I, I want them to heal the barriers. Mm -hmm. So now we're keeping the flow of inflammation cut from coming into the body. We'll, we'll usually, you can either get, BPC-157 comes, it's one of the only peptides that comes either in an oral because it's originally, where it originally comes from is the stomach lining. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the only ones that's available in capsule form, which is great. That most is of great. our patients, all, most of the other peptides are only available by injection and patients cringe a little bit when yeah. you suggest that they want an injection. So we, uh, this one is one that is available by capsule, so we do prescribe that for the beginning. And then move on either adding or moving around or substituting uh, what we call cycling the peptides so that patients can get the different benefits depending on where their system might need it. Do you name certain other peptides that you, because you use them a lot, or you just kind of ask for combinations with your compounding pharmacist, who, by the way, is not your local pharmacist at the chain drugstore. Exactly. That is a pharmacist who also went to pharmacy school, but they make these special formulations for your patients. So your doctor wants to work with a compounding pharmacist. Exactly. So, so there are several others. Uh, we use TA1 quite a bit. This is thymus and alpha-1. It comes from huh. the thymus gland. It's okay. a, a protein that, or a small protein that your thymus <laughs> gland Thymus-area. produces. Mm -hmm. The thymus gland is, is intimately involved in how the immune system responds. And so we use that one particularly in our patients with asthma, allergies, other uh, um, inflammatory what we would what we would refer to is the the auto inflammatory sort of process we would use those the ta1 in that one wow that's really interesting too mm -hmm. i'm going to look into that one more i wonder if there's a dental application for that one. probably probably <laughs> so i'll have to find out mm -hmm. and and then looping back around a lot of people may not realize they could have um, these just like mild digestive issues kind of going on for a long time and that is sometimes your first canary in the coal mine or that first siren that says Something's not quite functioning with you yet, and we often, I would say about 20% of the patients that we see in our dental office have chronic uh, digestive issues, IBS, Crohn's disease, these different types of problems, and they may be just ignoring it or medicating and not really getting to the cause. If they could get to the cause, they really might avoid this cascade effect where they could end up Absolutely. with an autoimmune issue. The interesting thing I think about the dental world is how there's so much disease in the mouth when we're not doing the things we need to do to take care of the mouth, that can begin to be the, the progenitor of other, uh, other body illness. It's of course the entire intestinal tract can start with the mouth and move, then you begin to cause these moving those, uh, those janitors into the henny penny um, type cells. So That makes sense. Mm -hmm. One of the things I tell patients about a lot, I don't want to get off on a, a tangent too much, and that's just that there was a study done in Finland a few years ago and the, that in these patients that had, had died of heart attacks, and in half of them, uh, the bacteria that caused cavities, there's just certain ones that cause dental cavities, those were found in the heart valves. And in a, at least 40% of those, they had just bacteria that caused gum disease in, in those patients' hearts of people who had passed away from heart attacks. So there's this whole circulatory effect. And so in medicine and in healthcare in general, more and more we're looking at inflammation as, as a causative problem that we could be addressing when it's a low-end type of issue, a smaller issue, so that it doesn't escalate into a bigger issue. Right. Starting with the, starting with the mouth, with the gut and then working on depending on how you're uh, responding. Mm -hmm. So this is an integrative medicine type of format where we collaborate and we, we want you out there in the public, we're hoping more and more people can become aware you can collaborate or the healthcare providers ought to be collaborating to help meet you where you are with how you want to treat your body. And a lot of us, I would say, might be more open-minded to, um, to trying new things because we, we like to think we like to help get back to the cause. Right. I think it's been the best having, being able to collaborate with you and share patients and say, what do you think? Give me another opinion. Put oh, another set been, of eyes. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Really helpful. And the patient's hopefully going to win, mm -hmm. so to speak. So we'll be right back. We're going to come back and, and just recap some of our main ideas here. Thank you for watching. 
Hi, we're back from our break, and I mentioned we we're going to be talking about this BPC-157 peptide and the other, some of the other ones, other peptides that Dr. Suzanne Turner uses in her practice with her patients that, that struggle with different things. A lot of these things are autoimmune issues, but maybe we should back up just a second and just do a little background explaining on what peptides are. Um, most people don't talk about peptides all the time, so, um, and autoimmune issues. Okay, so uh, if we're talking about autoimmune disease, when we're looking at how do we pick which protein that your body makes to use, because your body makes hundreds of them every single day, thousands of them every day. So if we look at the immune system and we look at how your body responds, there are cells that we call monocytes that I like to, they, they can come in two different forms. One of them is what I like to call the janitor. The janitor cleans things up and organizes and files things away in filing cabinets. Mm -hmm. The same cell, if it's stimulated by some sort of environmental thing, if it's stimulated by either an infection or a, uh, a, a trauma, or if there's a genetic mutation can contribute, or physical or emotional distress, mm -hmm. can convert that very quiet, calm janitor into what I like to call Henny Penny. So the very same cell runs around screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, throws chemical inflammatory messengers all around the body, and now the body begins to behave in a different way because it's being stimulated by this Henny Penny. Very Our cool. whole goal with treating with many of our peptides in, uh, affecting all sorts of disease processes, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's disease, uh, um, traumatic brain injury, infections, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome that were, probably affects the dentist industry. Dentistry, yeah. uh, you would see that um, what we're trying to do is convert that Henny Penny back into the janitor so it's doing its cleanup and repair work, it's filing and organizing jobs. So that's where we're trying to, the effect that we're trying to make. That is really cool. So. We've got a henny penny, somebody who's gone postal, and you're just trying to loop them back in, rein them back in, and train, retrain or reset the body to, to do what it was exactly. trying to do before. So you have different, probably favorite peptides. Um, can you maybe demonstrate a few of this? We mentioned B, this BPC-157, and I did find a study for dental people out there that when I was talking to American Dental Association, I brought it up that um, there was a study that they did rat with rats and they tied um, dental floss around teeth and some of the rats, they, and they left this floss there for like weeks. It was awful or it would have been awful except some of the, uh, of the animals had received BPC-157, the other ones did not and the ones that received this peptide had no sign of gum inflammation. Exactly. And that is incredible. So then you start thinking about not just that, because see, when we have inflammation in our mouth, we really have inflammation everywhere. So there, it has been studied for periodontal disease, and then when you use it, you're using it in what types of patients? So the most research that's done with B this is body protection compound is the oh, what it goes with BPC. Helps. And so the the most research in BPC-157 has been done in patients with ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, peptic ulcer disease. Wow. Uh, patients with traumatic brain injury. Yes, wow. Patients with even as simple as tendonitis. Mm -hmm. There's been so. So this is really the healing protein that really helps, or peptide that helps you with all sorts of healing phases. The way that it works in that system, helping to move those cells back to that genitor, calming, uh, so that they're not producing the inflammatory henny penny uh, proteins, stimulating your body to overreact to things. Wow. That's really cool. We all use, of those types of patients, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. We use it in all those patients. There's combinations of things we use depending on the patient. Everything is customized depending on the patient. That's the best thing about compounding is you can be very specific for an individual person. Uh, BPC-157 I often will use in, in uh, uh, patients with intestinal issues. And most of our inflammation, as we know, starts in the intestines. That's where we see all of the, the pathogens enter is through our food, through our things that we eat or drink. And there's so much, the majority, I think they say, of our immune system cells are located in our gut. So when exactly. our gut's not functioning right, everything else starts to go haywire. Exactly. If you imagine that you're from your mouth to the bottom, you're, you're like a paper towel holder or a, 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 what are the, the inner 
part of the paper towel. Yeah. You are, the, everything that's on the inside of that paper towel is, uh, is the outside of you. So you're trying to protect yourself so most of your immune system lives in that barrier that lines your intestines, trying to protect yourself from all the things that are actually coming from outside of you keep trying to keep them from coming in. And when that barrier gets broken down, mm -hmm. that's when we end up with autoimmune diseases or food allergies or asthma or any of those uh, environmental things that we, can, that we can have where our body is reacting too strongly. There's so much evidence even now that some of the particles that are around that, the bacteria that get into our system mm -hmm. can be present in the plaques that are, that are in dementia patients yes. in their, uh, that, we're, that we are familiar with in Alzheimer's patients. We see the particles from those bacteria that get in through the intestines in the brain. So we're connecting plaques. that. They're crossing Absolutely. that brain barrier. Absolutely. Through, through circulation. That's really fascinating. So you also, you probably are also using some of these peptides to help with gut health, maybe? Absolutely. That's where we usually will start, is we'll see patients with intestinal. I'll start with that because I, I want them to heal the barriers. Mm -hmm. So now we're keeping the flow of inflammation from coming into the body. We'll, we'll usually, you can either get, BPC-157 comes, it's one of the only peptides that comes either in an oral because it's originally, where it originally comes from is the stomach lining. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the only ones that's available in capsule form, which is great. Okay. Most of our patients, all, most of the other peptides are only available by injection and patients cringe a little bit when yeah. you suggest that they want an injection. So we, uh, this one is one that is available by capsule, so we do prescribe that for the beginning and then move on either adding or moving around or substituting uh, what we call cycling the peptides so that patients can get the different benefits depending on where their system might need it. Do you name certain other peptides that because you, you use them a lot or you just kind of ask for combinations? with your compounding pharmacist, who, by the way, is not your local pharmacist at the chain drugstore. Exactly. That is a pharmacist who also went to pharmacy school, but they make these special formulations for your patients. So your doctor wants to work with a compounding pharmacist. Exactly. So, so there are several others. Uh, we use TA1 quite a bit. This is the thymosin alpha-1. It comes from huh. the thymus gland. It's okay. a, a protein that, or a small protein that your thymus Up gland in produces. Mm -hmm. The thymus gland is, is intimately involved in how the immune system responds. And so we use that one particularly in our patients with asthma, allergies, other uh, um, inflammatory so what we would what we would refer to is the the auto inflammatory sort of process we would use those the TA1 in that one wow that's really interesting too mm -hmm. i'm going to look into that one more i wonder if there's a dental application for that one probably probably <laughs> so i'll have to find out mm -hmm. and and then looping back around a lot of people may not realize they could have um, these just like mild digestive issues kind of going on for a long time and that is sometimes your first canary in the coal mine or that first siren that says Something's not quite functioning with you yet. And we often, I would say about 20% of the patients that we see in our dental office have chronic uh, digestive issues, IBS, Crohn's disease, these different types of problems. And they may be just ignoring it or medicating and not really getting to the cause. If they could get to the cause, they really might avoid this cascade effect where they could end up Absolutely. with an autoimmune issue. The interesting thing I think about the dental world is how there's so much disease in the mouth when we're not doing the things we need to do to take care of the mouth. That can begin to be the, the progenitor of other, uh, other body illness. It's, of course, the entire intestinal tract can start with the mouth and move then you begin to cause these moving those uh, those janitors into the henny penny um, type cells. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. One of the things I tell patients about a lot. I don't want to get off on a, a tangent too much, and that's just that there was a study done in Finland a few years ago, and the that in these patients that had, had died of heart attacks, and in half of them. Uh, the bacteria that caused cavities, there's just certain ones that cause dental cavities. Those are found in the heart valves, and in a at least 40% of those, they had just bacteria that caused gum disease in, in those patients' hearts of people who had passed away from heart attacks. So there's this whole circulatory effect. And so in medicine and in healthcare in general, more and more we're looking at inflammation as, as a causative problem that we could be addressing when it's a low-end type of issue, a smaller issue, so that it doesn't escalate into a bigger issue. Right. 
starting with the starting with the mouth with the gut and then working on depending on how you're uh, responding mm -hmm. so this is an integrative medicine type of format where we collaborate and we we want you out there in the public we're hoping more and more people can become aware you can collaborate or the healthcare providers ought to be collaborating to help meet you where you are with how you want to treat your body and a lot of us I would say might be more open-minded to um, to trying new things because we, we like to think we like to help get back to the cause right I think it's been the best having being able to collaborate with you and share patients and say what do you think give me another opinion Put oh, another it's, set been, of eyes. it's been amazing mm -hmm. really helpful and the patients hopefully gonna win mm -hmm. so to speak so we'll be right back we're gonna come back and and just recap some of our main ideas here thank you for watching Welcome back to the Whole Healing Show, and I've got Dr. Suzanne Turner. She runs Vine Medical in Atlanta, Georgia, and Dr. Turner is talking with us about autoimmune diseases, and tell us, how do autoimmune diseases really set in on a patient? How do these happen? So interesting, the, the body, if, if you're affected by a, an infection, for example, you'll begin to uh, package up, your body will sense that that particular cell needs to be taken care of. So you'll begin to, much like if you were packing up a home, you put things in boxes and ship them off to the liver or the kidneys or wherever to be disposed of. In the case of autoimmune disease, there is a disorder in how that happens. There, we feel like there's a, sec a one or two hit, usually a two hit issue, and the second hit comes along. And so instead of packaging things up like, a, like you were moving from your home, mm -hmm. you begin to explode those cells. So things that are normally inside the cells, like mitochondria, like the nucleus, like, like DNA, all of a sudden go outside the cell. Wow. And now your immune system, which isn't used to seeing those things because they're inside the cell, now your immune system begins to say, oh gosh, these are scary things. So it begins to create antibodies or uh, uh, soldiers against your, uh, against your own self. So your thyroid, which is Hashimoto's disease, or your double-stranded DNA, which is lupus or Sjogren's or uh, rheumatoid arthritis, would be against your synovial cells. So now you're looking at attacking yourself instead of attacking the, um, the bacteria or viruses like you're supposed to be doing. So you could have different types of chemical exposures, potentially from industry or from maybe some toxins in your home or food. Mm -hmm. um, dry clean clothes, dry clean clothes, um, glyphosate. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, then you might have another, a secondary. The second, those are. We were talking about primary and secondary, but then you could also just have maybe a tipping point, something else. Now maybe you cut a yourself in your mouth, or you got gum, a gum disease issue, or a little bit you didn't floss for a while because you were in the hospital. Exactly, um, a small intestinal infection. Okay. Or what about an athlete who's running really hard, using up a ton of their nutrients and vitamins, but they're not replenishing enough? Particularly if you're talking about marathon or, or, or long distance runners, if you're talking about elite athletes, they can certainly deplete themselves. They're, just their cortisol release alone can increase that risk. They, uh, we also will see in menopause that women will have a depletion of, of estrogen and, mm -hmm. and progesterone, and those hormonal imbalances can also be that second hit that causes you to have some of these, in, these productions of this uh, rupture or explosion as opposed to the very organized uh, bo box packaging. Also, men can have a deficiency, sure. especially as they age, can have a deficiency of estrogen, which can also result in um, dementia or memory loss. That makes sense. We're seeing, we're just seeing an explosion of these autoimmune issues. Exactly. So it's really good to get out on the table. And I think I love your analogies in terms people can understand about how they can contract and why these things happen. So maybe they can learn better to prevent, because that's what we really exactly. want to talk about are the cause and effects how do you prevent these effects from, from ever taking place? Um, and um, then ways to support the autoimmune, these, these efforts that we're making now. What, what, what are maybe the top three things people could do to prevent autoimmune disease in their life? We didn't, we didn't talk about this to, when we were preparing, but you know, it's, it's, it's something that's the take home. 
What can you do to stop? I would say number one are, especially in the United States, we have to be careful about about the amount of sugar that we take in, in our diets. They're, they're, the food that we eat in, in the United States is so inflammatory in many ways. And so even just eliminating one soda per day, even just, just decreasing your uh, intake of, of one extra piece of bread per day, where you're getting, not getting those inflammatory foods. Mm -hmm. If you're increasing, we can even think of it in a positive way and say, if, let's increase the number of vegetables that you take in in a day. That's Maybe good, adding yeah. one organic food instead of the, uh, the regular food that you can get. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Suzanne Turner, for coming on our show and explaining autoimmune issues and how we can prevent them and what these new technologies pleasure. are out there available to our patients. Thank you. Thanks for watching The Whole Healing Show on UI Media Network.